Welcome to Fucked Up Fable Spooky Tales. If ruining your childhood is something you enjoy, you've come to the right place. Today we are going to be doing things a little bit differently, and so I invited a good friend of mine to join us today. So this is Megan. She is the creator of the YouTube channel Writing Women. Everyone say hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so Megan, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and the channel before we start? Um, sure. So, uh... I run the YouTube channel Writing Women. Um, it is a YouTube channel about the representation of women in fiction. So basically it is every episode is just uh, about a particular piece of fiction with typically a female main character. And I kind of dig a little bit into the narrative of that story how that character is portrayed, and I will go a little bit into the author or director or whoever created that character and how that character came to be written the way they were in a really roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a really like weird, messed up description of it, but it's about it. <laughs> it's the general gist, yeah. So I thought it was kind of perfect to have you come on here, given we're going to be talking about witches. If you watch the vampire episode, I mentioned I'm be talking about Baba Yaga and the Onibaba, which are mm -hmm. both witches in Eastern Europe and Asian culture. Um, so a little bit about this episode. I struggled a lot with this episode. <laughs> so I normally have my episodes planned out and written up well in advance. Like I currently have all the way through the end of the year completed and not this one. Like it was, it was rough. Um, and I think it happened because I knew what I wanted to cover. So I went digging on Baba Yaga first and found out that she is literally in thousands of stories and not a single story is the exact same. And I was just completely overwhelmed and was like, I can't write this right now. So thanks to Vi and her vampire episode, I actually got a big inspiration on how to go about doing this. Um, so I'm going to cover the basics of both Baba Yaga and the Onibaba and kind of the culture surrounding them and all of that. And then I'm actually going to do some show and tell with one of the books, which I showed in the vampire episode if you watch that. Um, so I cut it for suspense reasons. You did not. It's in the. <laughs> it's in the Spotify. I was listening to it. I did. That whole ending is in there. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> it was two hours long. By the end, I was like, I guess. <laughs> I it. You didn't bleep <laughs> out Nan Rice. You didn't bleep out her name, but you left that in. Like I don't know. I don't know what happened. It took me all day to edit. I have no idea. To be fair, if we do um, get a cease and desist letter from her, I'm going to make it our profile picture on everything because <laughs> uh, that would be awesome. Because then Anne Rice <laughs> noticed our tiny little podcast, and then we can just ignore it because you can say her name. I mean, Barbara Streisand effect. That's pretty fair use. Yeah, Barbara, Barbara Streisand effect. Barbara Streisand effect. She starts. She starts hating on you guys, and suddenly everybody's talking about you, and everybody bring us that it. publicity and right. Anne Rice. But we'd really prefer Anita Blake because St. Louis people got to stick together. Power. Fair. <laughs> Plus, Anita Blake is a better writer. Cancel oh. me. <laughs> I like Cancel me, vampire Twitter. I enjoy her fairy, fairy series a lot. Though I read it when I was very young and I probably shouldn't have. But thank you, teacher, who's now in jail. I was, I was deployed and the tiny little destroyer that I was deployed on happened to have all of Anita Blake's books, which was weird. Like usually the ship's libraries, especially the teeny tiny disorganized ones on destroyers don't have entire series and they happened to have them. So like I was in the ship's library one day, saw all of her books and was like, <clears throat> and stuffed them <laughs> in my rack. And all I did on deployment was get up in the morning, go do my work day, and I'm, I get massively seasick. And I would go back to my rack and crack open her books. And I just went through all of them in like a week. I should reread them. Re -read them because I'll get the references more now that I understand St. Louis. <laughs> I've never read, I've read them and had no idea what she was talking about half the time. Love it. 
I never read them, so I'll have to. I also have never read them. Oh, cool! Like, um, they're very mature. They are very <laughs> mature. It's like when you read the Dresden Files, and if, if you read the Dresden Files without ever having gone to Chicago, they're really weird. But then if you go to Chicago once, you're like, oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> I get it now. I get it. I've not read a ton of the Dresden Files, but I have some friends that are huge into Dresden Files. And I've played the Dresden Files RPG game. The- I like the TV series. I The books, I cannot... I can't get into his writing style, and I'm sure you might cover this, Megan, but the way he writes women is... Um... Yeah. Oh, I was just about to say that. <laughs> he does not typically have women as main characters of his books, but I do have plans to talk about the Dresden Files because every woman who is in his books is very poorly written. Yes, Sexy lamp. Yeah. <laughs> they, they are all sexy lamps who want to fuck Harry Dresden. It's terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. Because this... that's all women think about. So. Is this explicit? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no. Say fuck all you want. We don't care. It's <laughs> literally called Fucked Up Fables. <laughs> he also wrote this other series that I actually think is really good. It was basically, he was like a buddy of his, like dared him to write a story that was like kind of like Avatar. And basically it's this like kind of fantasy series where hmm. people ha- control these spirits that are elementals. It's a really interesting concept, really cool story, but it's the the representation of women in it is even worse than the Dresden Files. Wow. And like there's like one woman character who like for lack of a better term imprints on one of the male characters and basically everything about her changes to be the perfect mate for him. And then there's this other female character who her deep dark secret is that she's barren. She is a main character, and the dark secret. her personal conflict is that she doesn't want to fall in love, but she falls in love with a nobleman, but they can't be together because she's barren and she can't give him children, but she's supposed to be this, like, warrior, and her internal monologue every time they're together is about how, like... <gasps> I just love being with him because he makes me actually feel like a woman. Wow. <gasps> and that's it's hard like, ass. <laughs> well, you know, that's because we're only good for making sandwiches and having children. So if you're not doing either of those things, obviously. You're- I, I disagree. <laughs> we're very good at dishes and laundry, too. Fair. Mm, yeah, I'm you know, those are skills. <laughs> You have to pay more for those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The more skills you want out of us, like even folding laundry, gotta make more money. I require. I we require obviously can't dinner. work for ourselves. I require dinner at least three times a week to do laundry. <laughs> I like this plan. I'm not gonna lie. Adam does all of the laundry on all of the dishes. Tom does all the dishes and all of the cooking. I do Sam laundry all in return. <laughs> Adam works from home though. I live alone. <laughs> I do it all myself. <laughs> I feed myself dinner and then I cl- and then I clean my own dishes. <laughs> anyways, 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 witches, witches, so witches, guys. <laughs> so the content warning for this episode is going to be a little bizarre, which sounds weird after my last couple of Hercules and the Wendigo. But- so content warning for this episode involves cannibalism, infanticide, murder, and forced abortion slash labor? Question. So Hercules? <laughs> I know, I'm like, man, how many times am I going to have infanticide on these episodes now? Because, damn. <sighs> Alright. So first of all... Lots of dead movies. We're good. Lots of dead movies. I'm going to cover Baba Yaga, um, but before I like delve into these stories, I kind of want to set the stage a little bit. So Baba Yaga is a reoccurring character in many, 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 many Slavic fairy tales and folklore. Literally thousands. So if you didn't watch our vampire episode, where are the Slavs from? If you are like me and are directionally challenged, they're from Eastern (laughs) Europe. Which includes countries like Russia, Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, Czech, Macedonia, etc., etc., etc. There's like 50 or so countries that are considered Eastern Europe. So you just kind of like get the idea because I'm not going to... Geography is not my, my thing. 
So in these cultures, she is a huge main character. And while I was doing research for it, my show and tell's coming back. I found this book. Oh, my light. <clears throat> this book. <laughs> <laughs> so it is called um, Russian Fairy Tales. It is by Alexander Af- Afonisev, I think is how his name is pronounced. I don't know. Um, I did not read all of it, but based simply on title and the fact that there are 600 stories in here, I can guarantee that she is in like half of these. And I was like, that's way too much. So I just picked three. <laughs> three of like the main ones that kind of represent Baba Yaga and that are like typically the ones that people know um, if you're talking about a specific story. Um, so this book is kind of like a compilation book, if you will. And it is very, very similar to the Brothers Grimm book because he is known as the Russian Brother Grimm. So fangirl moment he was so inspired by the Grimm brothers that he literally created the field of studying folklore I don't care if the Grimm brothers say this dude is the guy who made this a thing so for those um, who are you know cultured out there it's called folkloristics (laughs) is the study of folklore but he died about a hundred years before this would even become a recognized field of study um, anywhere in the world so he died in like 1860, I think, and it wasn't until the 18 or the 1980s before it was actually accepted as a form of study. Um, so he spent his years collecting thousands and thousands of folklore stories relating to Russian culture and history specifically, but he kind of included all of Eastern Europe, and he compiled them into this book that we have today. Um, so. The reason that he was able to find so much, because he found like hard copies rather than getting oral stories like a lot of people, is that the Slavic nations really like to write out their stories rather than just orally giving them. So they do have oral traditions, but a good portion of their stuff is just actually written out. So it makes it really easy to compile it. (laughs) Um, So when it came time to be published, the Russian Geographical Society actually said that they would publish his work, and it was an eight-volume set that had, as I said, over 600. The version we have now is about 600 left. Um, And they're not like Aesop fable short. Some of them are pretty short. They're only like a page or two, but some of them are like short novellas of these stories. Um, And it's kind of this culmination of all the Slavic folklore printed so that everyone could read it. Definitely recommend it. That is my fangirl notice, you know, moment. Also, uh, Russian Geographical Society, if you want to sponsor us, hit me up. I will totally do it. (laughs) (laughs) You want 50 episodes on Russian folklore? We got you. Right. I will read them all. I got you, fam. All right. So My family is Eastern European, so. Yeah, you know. Also. Sponsor one of your own, Russia. Right. Yeah, there's, there's legitimate... There's legitimate history here. Can we get a research grant? Right. Bro, I'm (laughs) telling you, we will run our our whole channel on this shit. I can do my thesis on this. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be fantastic. Um, So the origin of the name Baba Yaga is a bit debatable, but from what I could tell, this is like my best guess at what her name comes from. So Baba is typically the word that they use for like old woman or like a grandma in almost every Slavic language. So it's kind of like a universal word. While the word Yaga probably comes from the Russian word Yaget. I think I said that right. I attempt to, to, to do these. <laughs> um, which means Perhaps. to abuse. So Baba Yaga is literally an abusive granny. <laughs> at least they were descriptive you know they what you gonna do so, me, I thought- they didn't need for sunshine and they didn't so i appreciate <laughs> right it's it gets it gets rough here Ag- aggressive pierogi rollers are a thing <laughs> see <laughs> see so true Fact. So he's typically depicted as an old spinster and basically lives in squalor so she is always dirty unclean unkempt she has really long teeth and a huge, almost to the point of disfiguring nose. So, like, in some of the pictures, it's, like, this huge, like, Pinocchio-style thing going on. She's kind of abused something else, too. Yeah. 
<laughs> so she's also like super short because of the nose and her being super old. She is always depicted as being ugly and she probably smells of just rotting disgustingness. I So is she the granny from Spirited Away? Uh so sort of? Yeah, um, it's actually a pretty accurate Yubaba Yubaba yeah. took a lot of inspiration from Babiaga. In fact, a lot of Hayao Miyazaki's work, like the visual depiction of Howl's Moving Castle mm-hmm. looks a lot took a lot of visual inspiration yeah, yeah. from artwork of Baba Yaga's hut chicken leg hut. Yeah. Which is yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, so yeah. Spot on with the nose, let me tell you. I, I took the liberty of reading a little bit <laughs> this week, and I I found more descriptions of p- parts of her body that smelled specifically. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm kind of glad we don't tell kids fairy, fa- like fairy tales like this anymore. It's great. That's gross. <laughs> That's I, gross. I told you, like, there That's is nasty. so much. There is so much out there about her. They, I guess, if she's going to be like the main character in just about every story, like, you're going to know what she's like. <laughs> you're going to intimately mm-hmm. know what she looks like and smells like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very intimately. Yeah. So while she is typically depicted as a hag, she does have the ability of magic. So she uses potions a lot, um, kind of similar to, we're going to use a lot of comparisons because she is the poster child for everything, which like in Brave, the witch that she finds who makes potions is kind of the magic that we're talking about here. So she has a potion that makes you youthful and allows her to shapeshift into a younger woman, not necessarily like a young maiden, but just a younger woman. Um, And she uses this to the surprise of absolutely no one. To tempt and trap people so she can eat them. Because Baba Yaga eats people. Mm, delicious. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> goals. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? You know, I mean, I don't want to eat people. <laughs> I mean... I, I'm not particularly tempted to eat people, but that's because I actually know what their insides look like. I mean, <laughs> it's called long pig for a reason. It probably <laughs> no. just tastes like bacon. <laughs> We've been... Gross. Oh, I can don't hear her. Me. Don't yell at me. She's upset with the fact that you said you wanted to eat people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, mom. No. No, don't say that. That's gross. Yeah. She'd eat people too if you and, like, lied. She'd eat I them. would try and have tried many different kinds of foods, and I would try almost any food once. I would not try people. Not mm. will. If I, was, if I was starving, I would try people. Same. I mean, there's that, but like, if I'm not starving, no y'all gonna turn into a bunch of Wendigos. We if I was, okay, okay. If I was a hag living in a chicken leg hut in the middle of the woods and no one wanted to talk to me because I had these big old saggy swanging titties and like a giant nose, <laughs> I would probably eat people. All right, that's fair. I mean, I would, I would probably under those circumstances, but I think I would just rather starve to death than like consume another person. Eat the chicken legs first, right off the house. But mm, then my house can't walk, right? Yeah, but that seems better than murder. Mm. (laughs) Depends on who murder. Murder, like. Let's see, where do we draw the line with murder? It's like the murder was okay, it was the cannibalism that wasn't okay. (laughs) I'm going to take a vigilante approach to this. I'm going to take a vigilante approach to this. I'll just only murder the bad ones. Uh, I think that we should put this out there. Fucked up fables and a toast. Do not (laughs) Do not condone murder. Approve of soliciting murder. We also don't approve of cannibalism. Also, <laughs> current and future employers. I also do not condone murder. <laughs> and I'm sure I am thinking about an alternate universe. I don't know about Megan. But <laughs> I'm to, to be clear, I am only referring to an alternate universe where magic and chicken leg huts exist, as far as we know. True. 
True. That's alleged. Fair. Um, <laughs> I would like to point out, though, you did you did say that if you were starving, you would eat people. <laughs> Dang, <you> got me. <laughs> I hope you wouldn't remember that. <laughs> we'll just edit that part out. Cut it no, out. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all have to be careful about what we say now. Mm. I don't know. I don't. I don't think anybody is going to have it any worse than me. Just outright condoning cannibalism. <laughs> I don't know. I don't condone say... cannibalism because of the illness it gives you. I mean, it's a other reason. reasons as well, but that's also a re- another reason not to. <laughs> it's okay in some cultures, and this show is all about discussing other cultures. True. It's very I mean, true. So. But cannibals often don't live for long. That's because yeah. of disease. That's fair. But you're also not going to live very long if you're starving. So fair. Self preservation. So, with- however. Fun story. I learned this recently because I learned about the real history behind Moby Dick. If you eat a person's body who was then already starving with you, if there's no fat in the body, you cannot digest the protein. Therefore, killing and eating a person wouldn't even help you from like keep you from starving to death. Interesting. They have to have fat within the meat. I don't want to know why you found this out and how they <laughs> found this out just googling if i were starving and I would, if i were starving I, with my with my yeah, and other curious interest all right you know, um, maybe if you're gonna google that maybe open uh an incognito tab yeah yeah incognito no, <laughs> you know i never do so if anyone searches my history especially my youtube history people are gonna be like do. They're not going to be able to find anything because you never close your fucking tabs. I never close my tabs. Oh, <laughs> Honestly, same. I'm. I've got like ten tabs open just on my laptop. My desktop probably has twenty. <laughs> so I was going to say I'm, I'm so pretty sure. Tabs open on your phone. It converts to a smiley face and stops counting. I have tabs open on my phone from almost a year ago, and I'm just like, I look at them, and I'm like, oh, I need to go back and look at that. I would like to point out that my phone has accurately counted up to 36 tabs, so you have to have more than that. 99, to be precise. Once you go over 99, it goes into a smiley face. I was just getting ready to go. I'm looking at you very pointedly. (laughs) (laughs) And I only have 30, 30, I think, on my computer right now. I lost that's, them because it's hard to set the other day. Um, so I had to recover and didn't recover them all. It's very sad. I thought I had a problem and I only have three open right now. Yeah, I, I do. I am chronically no. known for having like eight different chromes open though. Because I'll be like, this is my D&D prepping chrome. And then <laughs> this is this is my fun stuff chrome. And this is my research chrome. And so like I'll have like eight different internet like internet browsers open. And then all of them will have. I will say I hate tabs. having different windows open. They must all be in tabs. Yeah, Windows, Windows, I can't do. And honestly, I would have more tabs open right now. But when I take exams through Proctor U, I have to. I it it hurts. It viscerally hurts me. Like it hurt. It hurts every part of my body when I open up Proctor U and the Proctor's like, all right, I'm gonna take control of your desktop now. And I'm going to close out all of the tabs that aren't the exam tab. And I'm always just like, I need a whole other computer. You're going to what? That's why I do all of my exams on my laptop. (laughs) (laughs) Everything has to be in tabs. Every time he'll click and like, they'll start closing them. And I'm always just like, you know, Google has this fantastic invention <laughs> called bookmarks that you can look at from multiple I, devices. I forget about them. I bookmark the them. <laughs> if I bookmark something, I forget it ever existed. I don't want to forget. Exactly. Wow. Tabs are just so con- from, con- tabs are a constant anxiety reminder that you need to get back to that at some point. I don't need that stress in my life. That's why I get anyway. rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm like I look. I've got enough shit going on. I don't. I don't need. That's because I can just minimize a whole window. I don't need all of those tabs. I'll just bookmark it and come back to it ten years later. You know, it's fine. 
So witches. So witches. <laughs> All right. So we talked about. Okay. So as we've kind of discussed, Baba Yaga lives in a hut. So this hut does not have any doors or windows, and it sits atop a pair of chicken legs and is typically found at the edge of a forest. So to find the door to enter her house, there is a phrase that you say, which will reveal it. And that phrase is, turn your back to the forest, your front to me. Fucked up fables life rule number, I don't know, five. Sure, why not? Don't ever say this. (laughs) You just said it. But I'm not looking at a hut. Like, just moving forward, don't ever say this phrase. You'll be fine. It's fine. What is it again? Um, No. (laughs) (laughs) Life rule number five. I think we need to, like actually write down these life rules because i've thrown out oh no that's gonna be a compilation video later we're gonna go through our lessons of the year oh okay dope i we think i totally forgot to leave a lesson at the end of the vampire episode it'll be fine it's fine bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> was it the law and order noise <laughs> i was about to say dick bull <laughs> sponsor us dick Love your show. Dick Wolf, can we get a product? Can we get a, can you can we get a production credit? <laughs> right. I can do it. I can find it. <laughs> so this hut has a fence around it, which is called a palisade, which I had to look up because I didn't I did not take architecture in school. I don't know anything about it. I know the word buttress, but I couldn't actually tell you what a buttress is in terms There's of There's flying buttress too. Yeah, uh, it's amazing the <laughs> amount of architectural terms that you learn running a D and D game. Yeah, I remember flying by history. history. I learned about cathedrals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my no, not my thing. So, anyways, so a palisade is a type of wall, typically made out of pieces of wood, so it's like a stake wall that they build around towns or buildings as like a fortress protector. So I instantly think of Princess Mononoke and Iron Town that they have those huge walls with that are just made of stakes, and then inside is the actual like town. So she has one of these around her hut. However, it is not made of wood or even stone. It is made of human bones, and they are all topped with the skulls of the people she has eaten. Because Question. Joffrey ain't got shit on this bitch. Let me tell you. Does what the palisade move with the hut? Yes. It's like a walking fortress. Oh. So why you would want to okay. enter through these bones to find a door to say this phrase, to enter into our hut, we'll get to. But I also have a lot of you questions. Have to be, why. You have to be really motivated right. to want to talk <laughs> to is, women or it, women. It, yeah, it takes a specific kind of person to do this. And we'll kind of get into like why someone would want to even bother with that. So... Unlike most witches that we see today who fly on brooms, Baba Yaga flies around in a mortar. Yes, a mortar from a mortar and pestle and uses the pestle to help her steer. And I just really like the image of this old (laughs) decrepit granny flying around (laughs) in a tub. You know what it makes me think of? Pestle to steer. (laughs) It makes me think of Bowser Jr. from Super Smash Bros. It for some reason it makes me think of Kagura from Inuyasha with her little feather, <laughs> where she like it it's like whoosh, and then she, it like spins around with her just sitting on it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, sticking out. This is it's it's hilarious. Like I know that she is the things that nightmares dread encountering. But, but if I saw that, I would laugh. Right. I'm like this is just so funny to me. I'm picturing um, mortar and pestle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm legit picturing you, Baba, from Spirited Away in a mortar and pestle, but she's like throwing it like it's a robe. <laughs> I'm imagining it like a joystick. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. It's so ridiculous. It's fantastic. Sorry, um, another fun fact about Baba Yaga's hut is that it is a playable character in the game Smite. Oh really? You can play Baba Yaga's house. Yeah, you could be the house, and it has like smush people. Uh, I don't know because I've never actually played it. And you can't smush people. It's not worth it. There's I mean, a, I'm sure, there's I'm a sure bar. You can. What? 
there's a boss in Final Fantasy VII Remake that made me wonder if it took inspiration from it. You literally fight a house. <laughs> and it may it, it's a it's it's a house that like spits magic at you <laughs> and, i mean could be and it has legs and it made me wonder like where'd that come from hmm. is that i don't remember if it was in the original or not because it's i was literally like eight the last time i played it but i definitely remember it from the remake and i immediately was like wait a minute one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> she is one of a kind, things. though. So, Ooh. all right. Wow. So, earlier <laughs> I talked about how there's hundreds and hundreds of stories of her, and it is really easy to get overwhelmed, and that I kind of like deep dove into it. So, the reason why it's easy to get overwhelmed is there is no real consensus on her purpose. Like, she serves, she's a multifaceted character. So she plays both the villain and the helpful old lady. She's evil, kidnapping kids and eating them. But people also go to her for, like, sage advice and help on their quests. And in some cases, she even offers safe haven to people. Like, just out of the goodness of her heart. Um, so In her chicken-legged yeah, bone hut. Yeah. Like, yeah, I wouldn't so, go there for I just come Neither to she's like probably the smell. Slavic personification of chaos because she just does whatever the fuck she wants at any given time. So nothing really makes sense when you like compile all of the stories <clears throat> together for one singular person. So I have an idea <laughs> to stay sane. Just think of her as that one creepy granny story that everyone has, but it's always a different grandma. That's Baba Yaga. So. They all kind of like that story. have a similar look. They all smell of mothballs, yada, yada, yada. But what she does is a little bit different. So she might be SpongeBob's granny making cookies for you. Or she's the witch from Hansel and Gretel fattening up kids to eat them. You know. At least she yeah. had a candy house. Or <laughs> she had a chicken house. Thematically like, appropriate for me, she might be Tamara Pierce's graveyard hag. Because same. that is when I, when you told me about this episode that is immediately who I thought of <laughs> that's the graveyard hag I don't know if that's who like she was thinking of when she wrote the character of the graveyard hag but that's probably. the graveyard hag <laughs> probably there there are many things that are compared to Baba Yaga but I've yet to mm -hmm. find anything that is her mm -hmm. like, I was like oh cool this sounds from you know the Onibaba let's do those they mm -hmm. are linked they're not no connection whatsoever just saying so now that you have this idea in mind i thought that i'd do a little bit of show and tell so i have three stories um they are short one of them is like a full page like just front and back it's just a page that's it <laughs> um so i picked three of kind of like the most common ones so the first one is called baba yaga and the brave youth the second one is called The Maiden Sar, and the third one, which is probably the most well-known story of Baba Yaga, is called Vas Vasilisa the Beautiful. So, thank you, um, Alexander, whatever your last name is. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it, and I'm like, wait, I don't, I don't. Alexander. <laughs> So the first story is Baba Yaga and the Brave Youth. So once upon a time, there lived a cat, a sparrow, and a brave youth. The cat and the sparrow went to the forest to chop wood and said to the brave youth, You keep the house, but mind you, if Baba Yaga comes and counts the spoons, do not say a word. Keep quiet. I already what? don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right. So I think another lesson is don't have a spoon collection. <laughs> you know, like, don't have a spoon. Don't do that. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Very well, said the brave youth. The cat and the sparrow went away, and the brave youth sat on the stove behind the chimney. Suddenly, Baba Yaga came in, took the spoons, and began to count them. This is the cat spoon, this is the sparrow spoon, and this is the brave youth's spoon. The brave youth could not restrain himself and cried, Baba Yaga, don't touch my spoon. I feel like that's a euphemism. I, I'm, I'm already starting to regret this, guys. <laughs> Just saying. <sighs> oh, 
Baba Yaga sees the brave youth, sat on the mortar, and flew off. I told you. I told you. <laughs> she drove the mortar, spurring it with the pestle and sweeping away her tracks with her broom. With the brave youth bit. shouted, cat run, sparrow fly. They heard him and rushed to his help. The cat began to scratch Baba Yaga and the sparrow to peck at her. This sentence, I'm sorry, this, this sentence makes no sense. The cat began to scratch Baba Yaga and the sparrow to peck at her. Thus, they rescued the brave youth. Okay, sure. That's English. The end? No. Oh, <laughs> like, wow, that was short. <laughs> no, not quite. Uh, the next day, the cat and the sparrow again prepared to go to the forest to chop wood and told the brave youth, mind you, if Baba Yaga comes, do not say anything. Today we are going far away. As soon as the brave youths had sat down on the stove behind the chimney, Baba Yaga came again and again began to count the spoons. This is the cat spoon, this is the sparrow spoon, and this is the brave youth's spoon. The brave youth could not restrain himself and shouted, Baba Yaga, don't touch my spoon. <laughs> I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Baba Yaga seized the brave youth and dragged him along with her. The brave youth shouted, cat run, sparrow fly. They heard him and rushed to his help. The cat began to scratch and the sparrow to peck at Baba Yaga. Thus they rescued the brave youth again. Then they all went home. The third day, the cat and the sparrow prepared once more to go to the forest and chop wood. And they said to the brave youth, mind you, if Baba Yaga comes, be silent. Today we are going even farther. Why are you continuing to leave him? <laughs> I have a Why lot of is he continuing to question the spoons. He's had multiple <laughs> warnings. I don't say anything. I want to know why a cat and a sparrow are the ones chopping wood when they have a person. <laughs> I mean, that, that's fair. <laughs> that one. I don't understand. All right. The cat Yay, and the... Russia! Right. <laughs> the cat and the sparrow left, and the brave youth sat on the stove behind the chimney. Suddenly, Baba Yaga again took the spoons and began to count them. This is the cat spoon. This is the sparrow spoon. This is the brave youth's spoon. The brave youth did not say a word. Baba Yaga counted again. This is the cat spoon. This is the sparrow spoon. And this is the brave youth spoon. The brave youth did not say a word. Baba Yaga counted a third time. This is the cat spoon. This is the sparrow spoon. And this is the brave youth's spoon. The brave youth could not restrain himself any longer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and cried Don't loudly. Touch that spoon. Don't touch my spoon! <laughs> Baba Yaga seized the brave youth and dragged him along with her. He cried, cat run, sparrow fly. Oh but... Did I skip some? The end? <laughs> but his brothers did not hear him. It was just really weird that it said brothers instead of like friends. I don't know, it was weird. Baba Yaga took him home, put him in the wooden shed by the stove, made a fire in the stove, and said to her eldest daughter, I am going to Russia. Meanwhile, roast this brave youth for my dinner. Very well, said the daughter, because why not? The stove, the stove grew hot, and the girl told the brave youth to come out of the shed. He came, wait, he was just locked up! He came Details. out. <laughs> Fairy tales. <laughs> He came out. Lie down on the roasting pan, said the girl. Why? Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. He went? I'm sorry. He lay down, held up one of his feet so that it touched the ceiling, and put the other on the floor. The girl said, not that way, not that way. The brave youth said, how then? Show me. The girl lay down on the roasting pan. The brave youth quickly seized an oven fork, pushed the pan with Baba Yaga's daughter on it into the oven, and went back into the shed to wait for Baba Yaga. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> rude. suddenly she ran in and said now i'm going to feast and regale myself on the brave youth's bones the brave youth answered her feast and regale yourself on your own daughter's bones baba yaga was startled and looked into the stove she found her daughter all roasted and roared aha you cheat just wait you won't get away she ordered her second daughter to roast the brave youth and went away there's another daughter she has daughters later <laughs> <laughs> they were adopted <laughs> I don't know what's um, happening here. Yeah. <laughs> so her second daughter made a fire in the stove and told the brave youth to come out. Why are... Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. He Why came out, okay? lay on the pan, put one foot on the ceiling and the other on the floor. The girl said, not that way, not that way. Show one me on the how. the ceiling and the other on the floor? 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure that one out. I yeah, have you not. put one ceiling, one foot on the ceiling, one on the floor. I, my understanding is that her hut is actually really small inside. Because you know like, what there, you think of? Do you remember way back in the day those videos of people doing the splits on things? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, see, I imagined it like laying on your back with one knee bent and the other leg like up with your foot on the side. Oh yeah. Nah, bro. We need you the plank, not your splits. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a really funny image. Just thinking about people just being like, right, straight up. <laughs> Am I doing it right? <laughs> like, like, Obviously. Like and the daughter's like, are you a dumbass or something? No. Right. What are you doing? Put your leg down. <laughs> yeah, I can't cook it. you like that. <laughs> so the girl lay on the pan and the brave youth shoved her into the oven. Went ah, back oh, to the she and there. Suddenly he heard Baba Yaga crying. Now I'm going to feast and regale myself on the brave youth's bones. He answered, feast and regale yourself on your own daughter's bones. Baba Yaga flew into a rage. Eh. It literally says eh. E-H. <laughs> Comma. <laughs> eh. 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 What? Eh. She said, "Just wait. You won't get away." He's literally not leaving. Eh. Oh, she's no. Like <laughs> the same scene is repeating. She ordered her youngest daughter, because three is apparently, I guess, a common number in these stories. She well, ordered her youngest well, daughter to roast him, but to no avail. The brave youth shoved her into the oven too. Bobby Haga flew into an even greater rage. Now, she said, this time I swear you won't get away. She made a fire in the stove and cried, come out, brave youth, lie on the pan. He lay down, touching the ceiling with one foot, the floor with the other, and thus could not go into the oven. Oh, so that's why he was, you should have put this earlier in the story. <laughs> Bobby Haga said, not that way, not that way. And the brave youth still pretended that he did not know how. I don't know how, he said. <laughs> Bobby Yaga at once curled up and laid down on the pan. The brave youth quickly shoved her into the oven, ran home, and said to his brothers, That's what I did with Bobby Yaga. The end. So this was probably written by a man. Because it does not put him in a good light. Also, I get a really strong sense of Hansel and Gretel out of this. Right. Let me see how long these other ones are. I might only read this one. I wonder are... if Hansel and Gretel is somewhat inspired by Baba Yaga. Yeah, that's what oh, I was sure. wondering. Most definitely. It's, okay. always, it's really interesting because Baba Yaga, like, the, it, the imagery of Baba Yaga has been so influential in so much. Like, because in some folklore, she's pictured as, like, the singular person. And mm -hmm. then in some stories, she has daughters. But also in some stories, she is three. Yes. Oh, no. I was actually thinking about skipping it. But the Maiden Sar story is one where it's three women named. Oh, yeah. Them. And yeah. I think I, I think I might have read that one a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. That was actually the first time I ever, like, came across the name Baba Yaga, and it was when I was listening to the the Tannis podcast, which Tannis is an interesting podcast, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Just listen to the black tapes. It, they're both by like uh, Pacific Northwest stories. They're really interesting. They're like spooky, interesting stuff. But Tannis is about this like spooky special location that like bends time and space and some people think it looks like a hut on chicken legs and some people think it looks basically like a a, a, a hut that's bigger on the inside and it like it's it's it's, okay. it's interesting and the the podcast makes it sound more interesting than I'm making it sound <laughs> but the podcast also gets very dumb very fast after the first season so it's yeah, not worth yeah. it's not worth getting invested gotcha. in but yeah. i think but, i'm just gonna cliff note the maiden sar because i was just looking through how many pages yeah and even kind of like fun. um witcher three um the crones the three crone witches mm -hmm. in witcher three were all like basically you know i mean their imagery is considered to be like based on the imagery of like the Baba Yaga, the three, the the triple version of her. Yeah. And imagery that like 
exists in other cultures, but some people speculate goes back to myths of her, like further back, like that she's the source of that imagery, yeah. which is really interesting to try and like trace back a lot of those visual depictions. Yeah, they um it, they call it the triple goddess. I don't remember what the other term is for mm-hmm. it, but it's the the maid and the woman, the croon is mm-hmm. it's a very common thing. It's it's like a literary uh whatever you want oh. to call it. And yes, I know of that. So they use it a lot. So Baba Yaga is sometimes depicted that way as three women, either like three hags or the maiden, the woman, the croon, that sort of thing. But the reason that I didn't really go into that is because, as we all know, in I don't want to just say America, but like kind of like the OG pantheon mm-hmm. that everyone knows is Greek mythology and Roman. So a lot of folklore and mythologies that involve like godlike creatures is kind of compared to those like, oh, this is their version of Jupiter or Zeus. This is their version of Aphrodite or Venus, mm-hmm. kind of that comparison. So there is a breakdown of Slavic gods, gods, they're not actually gods, that does the same thing. However, Baba Yaga is not listed in that because she is not considered on par with a god. She is her Mm -hmm. own literal category. (laughs) So she's kind of like truly her own person that there really isn't a comparison for. I'd be interested because I have have access to like JSTOR and stuff right now since I've (laughs) because of my university so I'd be interested in like looking up to see if I can find any like deep dive research articles into like the mythological history of her because like now I'm kind of interested in that yeah it is kind of interesting so a hop a jump and a skip from eastern Europe is Asia and nestled in there we have the beautiful country of Japan so they had their own version of Baba Yaga, but unlike the Slavs, she's not a singular person, but a classification of creatures. So let me break this down for you. And if you know the song, The Rattlin' Bog, it's all I could think of while I was trying to come up with this depiction of how to describe this. So think of a tree. So this tree is the yokai, which are the supernatural and spectral beings of Japanese culture. So it's kind of like the general thing of it. And then on this tree, there is a branch for each different type of yokai. And then one of these branches is representative of the oni, which are kind of like demons and ogres and trolls, those sort of creatures. And then on this oni branch, you have a lot of leaves. And we're going to be focusing on two very specific uh, leaves that are kind of one. It's like a, think of it like a leaf that's half turning, half not. That's how we'll think of it. So this leaf is the Kijio. So these two beings are women who are essentially turned into Oni. So they're turned into demons. You aren't, I guess you can be born, but typically you become an Oni. Um, And they become an Oni due to their own karma. So a Kijio, Kijio, Kijio. I say it enough. I'll say it. Three times every time. <laughs> <laughs> so they are a young woman oni, while the onibaba is a demon hag, literally. The word onibaba means demon hag. Just straight up. Oni and baba. Hey, love it. So the kijio, 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 <laughs> kijio. <laughs> swear. swear. Can we just call them kiki or something? <laughs> <laughs> sure i don't know these things we're just gonna call key from Kijio. now on not to be confused with empress key a whole other story yeah kijio is also the term used to describe a woman who has a hideous heart quote unquote which really means that they're kind of like a bitch or a cunt that's going to turn into an like and Momo in memories of a game yes she would definitely be one i love her two pieces though she was in the new mulan they didn't use her well she was I... the witch oh was she <gasps> yeah i was watching i was like is that Hansi Momo? gong gong li is one of my favorite chinese actors of all time i fucking She's love amazing. her amazing they she didn't use her well and she is gorgeous anyways side tangent <laughs> So the Onibaba are said to look like shriveled old ladies 
They have wild, unruly hair, a ridiculously large mouth, not nose, mouth. It's like a unhinged, crazy, creepy mouth. And they have like an almost manic look to them. So they just look like total manic. That's going to be me when I'm old. 100%. You're like, gonna join the I'm wearing a hat because this is my hair. Me, like. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn into like. Uh, I'm gonna turn into like the Eastern European version because I've got the nose. <laughs> yeah. See, we got it all. So Man, I'm gonna be the only thing that's bright and shiny left. I mean, we'll find. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. find. See. <laughs> so the Onibaba typically have a kitchen knife. I brought a prop. Not really. All right. So they're usually seen with a knife or a spool of thread, and they are apt at the art of disguising themselves as just grandmas. They don't go for like, yeah, they don't go for like younger women. They just depict themselves as grandmas because grandmas are innocent and (laughs) wow. So you are oh, oh. going to be an Onibaba. Just confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they lure people in by giving them the sense of security when they strike and mm-hmm. attack them and eat them because, of course. Mm, so the origin of the Onibaba is believed to come from the story of a woman from, I did not phonetically do this one. I knew there was one I was missing. From um, My question is, how does she give people a sense of security when she looks psychotic? No, she, <laughs> she, disguises, she disguises herself as a grandma. So she just looks oh, like a okay. innocent All right. grandma. That, that makes a lot more sense yeah. in my brain. I was like, she's got like wild <laughs> hair, a freakishly large mouth. Wait, wait. Like, you think she's glamored to look like a nice old grandma? Yeah, she, they... Very similar to Baba Yaga, who takes a potion to do it. They can just, like, shapeshift into a grandma. So they don't make themselves look like maidens. They just make themselves look like little old ladies. So Guys, I think I found the last, the last cosplay of my cosplay career is going to be an Onibaba. <laughs> Mine's going to be Granny from, uh, uh, what, what is yours? I love it. Granny I'm old, old, I'm old Sophie. Uh, but... All I'm getting out of these stories you're sharing tonight is don't trust old women. Right? Yeah. You, gotta, you got a grandma? You can't uh, trust her. Hollywood was right. Women over 40 don't deserve to work. <laughs> um, I can attest to the fact that there is, like, like y'all hear about old lady strength. Old lady strength is a thing. It's frightening. It is. They will, they will fucking rip your arm off yeah. if given the opportunity. Don't trifle with the old ladies. It's the life lesson here. Honestly, like especially I'm... the ones that are under a hundred pounds, they will wreck you. My, you I remember my grandma. Them. My grandma had like a vice grip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Alicia, you remember my nana? She was tiny. She weighed maybe a hundred and five pounds. Yeah, and they will hit you. Her her hand was like you could use that in like a like a heavy duty like wood shop in place of a vice like yeah. you, like it was awful if she was mad at you and she grabbed your arm to be like come here it was like oh yeah they will end you they're all secretly they onibabas all of them especially when you give them anesthesia and then they wake up in the middle of surgery no so like we we wake them up before we take them to yeah. recovery um, so that they're not like actively getting medications anymore, and it's that like half moment between like half consciousness and let me tell you, if they get a hold of you, s- say goodbye. Be like, I didn't need you, fingers. Is it? Is it? No, I woke up at the beginning of surgery before. Is it? Is it the shit out of that nurse? <laughs> is it common for people to be combative when they're coming out of anesthesia after a surgery? Uh, it is relatively common it's actually the most common for redheads i was i was just wondering because i had i had surgery a few months ago and i literally punched my surgeon in the face when coming out of anesthesia i do not remember it but he told me at my follow-up appointment like like shiner and everything he was like yeah you like this is you (laughs) 
I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and I was like, am I weird or do people actually, did that make me no, feel that's, better? No, that's pretty, that's pretty common. It's actually a little weird that your surgeon was still there because usually <laughs> like, uh, like 20 minutes before the end of the surgery when all there's left to do is like close the incisions or like mm-hmm. piece them out. Like I got other shit to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna let my PA finish mm-hmm. finish the drink here. So like um, I don't get paid enough. Yeah, for but this. like on occasion yeah. they hang out, especially yeah. as, like depending on what it was for. On occasion they'll hang out, and uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's pretty common. We have we have multiple times had to like just like jump across a bed, be like, nope, stop, please. Like, uh, no. wait, that's that's a new hip. Don't use that yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'm yeah. glad I didn't try to do anything like that. Wow. Just yeah, strap me down on nice. bed. So witches. <laughs> so, so witches. That was uh, technically a related tangent. But I mean, it was. Do. Yes. Definitely. Witch- Every tangent is technically related somehow. <laughs> True. We're always like, <laughs> like two degrees of separation. Right. No. You know, instead of t- degrees of Kevin Bacon, it's degrees of tangent related stuff <laughs> so the origin of the onibaba so they believe that it comes from a story of a woman from <sighs> dachigahara i'm just gonna do the uh, hard r because i spoke i took french okay they have hard r's thank you Sorry. <laughs> and she died near kuruzuka so adagacha ad Adachi Gahara um, actually has a museum for her and it houses what is said to be her like remains and then the instruments that she used to kill and cook people in. Fun Mm. fact. Neat. So like with all legends that we talk about on here, versions of the story of the Onibaba, Onibaba, I can't talk vary from area to area, but I'm going to focus mainly on this origin from Adachi Gahara. And there are two stories I'm going to share with you related to this. And you can actually find shrines and plaques at both of them where these stories are actually like listed. It's pretty dope. So, the first one is the story of Koigoroma, the Onibaba. So, Long ago, there was a woman named Iwate who worked as a nurse in the capital of the capital, so the palace. She took care of the princess and formed an attachment to the young girl. This princess, however, had an illness that no one could cure and it left her unable to talk. So Iwate wanted to save the princess and went to a fortune teller for help, as one does. So the fortune teller tells Iwate that in order to cure this disease, I've got very Hercules vibes from this. (laughs) so in order to cure this disease she needs to get the liver from the fetus of a pregnant woman's womb and feed it to her wait 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 Mm -hmm. the liver from the fetus within a pregnant woman yes does she does does it have to get that liver while it's still within the pregnant woman Yes. Um, I'm throwing this out there and this is very, very specific, but my mind immediately went to using this story as like a pregnancy announcement. <laughs> and, and just being like, you can have mine. And then everybody be like, oh, I'm so excited for you. But like, that's really fucking weird. <laughs> I wouldn't get it. I'd be like, you baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really specific request. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. When I heard this, I was like, so this is like the Oracle telling Hercules that he has to enslave himself to someone to cure himself. I was like, what the fuck is up with mm-hmm. these oddly specific like, cures? Why the liver? I, yeah, why? I don't know. My guess is because the liver is one of the largest organs that you have. So like, it's, it's well, very prominent. And this Oh wait, no, never mind. I was like, this is Russian folklore. We like drinking, um, but it's not Russian, so. No, isn't, isn't there some stuff in like? I could be totally wrong about this. Isn't there some stuff? I feel I feel like I have heard of like the liver in. Oh, you know what it is? It's from an Anne Rice book. <laughs> <laughs> 
in the vampire origin myth in the Anne Rice books, it was like they ate like the brains and the livers and stuff like that of uh like the tribe of people that like the vampires came from. They like ate people and they ate like their brains and livers. And it she Anne Rice claimed that she took it from like ancient practices uh ancient egyptian practices which i don't i don't know how like accurate that actually is or if she like made all of that up she said that she took it from like ancient practices of people See? Consuming, like, hey, and, Rice, stuff like that. Us. and allegedly allegedly <laughs> allegedly no we mentioned her name thou shalt not mention she will not be named so, uh, i just that, want the notoriety that woman uh something something to do with like certain organs being consumed in certain cultures or something like that because they were I do know that the rhythm. brain in I don't know if it's specifically in Japanese but like in Asian culture is kind of like because you hear about creatures eating people's brains uh, mm-hmm. they talk about it like in Princess Mononoke when yeah, the, like, monkey, the monkeys like, want to eat the brain so that they can gain that knowledge. Yeah, like yeah. brains, hearts. I feel yeah. like I've read of in other places other than just she who shall man, not be named. Man ice. Man ice. Man ice. <laughs> 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 I call it ran ice. Ran ice. Ran ice. Ran ice. Yeah. Book. I feel like I've read in other places. It don't really mean to us, Ghost of Van Rice. I know you're here somewhere. She's <laughs> dead. I know she's not dead, but like spirit. she hears all. Okay. Her spirit is here just waiting to litigate. She's her copyright senses are going. Is someone invoking my name? She's Facebook, so now we're all gonna have ads pop up for her shit on Facebook. I'm still oh sitting on YouTube. I had a Vlad Dracul video pop up today. I was like, are you You're welcome. in this? I had um, epic rap battles of history. Vlad the Impaler versus Dracula pop up. I would hate like, to have. I would have. I would hate to have Dan Mice's stuff pop up in ads because their new stuff is terrible. <laughs> Allegedly. It. So Onibaba's. Yeah. Um. So she has to get this liver and feed it to the princess, right? So Iwate is like, dope advice. I'm gonna do it. So, do you think do you think that they knew that the liver is one of the only organs that can like actively regenerate itself? Probably not. I don't know. I didn't deep dive into why it was specifically a liver. I just went with the story and it says liver. I mean, that's that fair. That's completely reasonable. That's probably what I would have done. I just <laughs> um the reasons that it's a liver are interesting to me. So, that I, I, might, I might do a little yeah, I might do yeah. a little bit of personal research. Yeah, that. That I'll come. I'll come back next know. week. And let you know. Yeah, we'll next week. Content. <laughs> I love it. So Iwate decides that she's going to follow this advice, returns home to pack for the trip, and tells her family goodbye. So Iwate had just recently given birth to her own daughter. So she gives her daughter to her husband and is like, "Watch over her. I'm going to go find this cure for this sickly princess that I've kind of come to see as like a second child to me." Watch over my yeah. baby while I go cut the baby from another lady's belly. <laughs> to save another baby. baby out, just the liver. While yeah. I go reach in for that liver. <laughs> yeah. So you don't need that. it'll grow back. Would, would this lady even know what a liver looks like? She's a nurse. But the so, yeah. thing she's a surgical nurse. That's true. I feel like Back most in? nurses have a general idea of what a liver looks like. Um, but I have a really, really high faith base in most nurses. Well, I'm gonna and still I probably should gonna... because I have met some dumb as fuck nurses. I feel this like... is a long time ago, so when I think of nurse, I just think of caretaker. Like, yeah, that's kind of what I you feel like. like everything looks a lot different when you're like reaching around someone's squishy insides. It's Especially probably in, a lot different than like the academic knowledge of what it looks like. True. That's Especially true. in a fetus rather than an actual person. That's but, also very true. You know, I will also like to point out though that nurse as a role of caretaker was not a thing until 1854. Nurses were actually like basically exclusively like surgical assistants or procedure hands. Well, before this, that. this is probably a translation of a translation of a translation yeah. so anyway, i'm continue. curious to what the, anyway. if that's the case or if you know they meant something else or i don't know it just but she did have an illness it could have been a, a nurse mm-hmm. yeah so um but i do have one more question that might yeah. take us on a side tangent you're fine does she have to cut the fetus out of the mother 
and then get the liver or leave the fetus in the mother and try to get the liver through the mother's body. Let me put this question to you. If you were going to remove the liver from a fetus that's still inside the womb of a woman, would you leave the fetus in there or would you take it out? Well, if it specifically has to still be inside the womb of the woman... According, yeah, according to what you said, I would think that the fetus needs to remain within the woman when you and get the liver. My first, so I'm counter, taking it like literally. My first counter question would be: Do they both have to be alive? So, the way that I take it as no, they do not both have to be alive. They just still have to have a liver intact, and like if they die during this process. So be it. Take but the and... it can't come from a newborn. So the child cannot have already been born. Mm-hmm. And if you cut it out of the womb, it is officially born. So I guess it would have to still be in the womb. Do you, so, can you, can you, some people. Will you There's reread? A group of people who's <laughs> what? Sorry. Will you reread the that little that little quote for me again? This, okay? Because I I might have I might have another question based off of the wording. Yeah, reread it. I have thoughts on the movie. <laughs> no! I can only do like, so guys so obsessed with this. <laughs> no, we're only I feel like we're all really stuck on this one part. We're all just like, hmm. We want to know the logistics. We yeah. need. I, I really no, but that's like a legitimate logistics. request. Will you actually yeah. reweight it so I can process yeah, the wording? I can do that. So the fortune teller tells Iwate that in order to cure this disease, she needs to get the liver from the fetus in a pregnant woman's womb and feed it to her. Does the princess. fetus have to remain? Wait, so she, so she has to feed the liver to the pregnant woman or to the person she's trying to cure? To the person she's trying to cure. So to the princess. Okay. Does the fetus have to remain inside of the woman That's after, what I'm asking. after the liver is taken? Oh, like, no. does the fetus still have to be inside the lady when she's feeding the liver to the person she's trying to cure? No. Hmm. I'm assuming both are dead at this point. Have yeah, but like, what? But what if so the mom like, is not dead yet? I don't know. You guys are getting <laughs> the ethical way of accomplishing this is to just send out messengers looking for freshly dead pregnant women. <laughs> At what stage of development must <laughs> the liver be? way of going about this. It would at least have to have a liver. So however old a fetus is at which it gets a liver is that and beyond, but not but it cannot have been born yet. Hold Did on a second. Hey Alexa, born? at what point does a fetus develop a liver? <laughs> Technology, guys. <laughs> like, you have questions, Alexa? Thank you, Alexa. I'm learning so According much. to Alexa, <laughs> for the first three months of development, the liver is the main source of development for the fetus, including the hmm. bone marrow. Interesting. Interesting. Question. It did say woman in it, right? Am I woman? Yes. 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 Okay. Because I was thinking there might be a loophole with getting an animal, but if it said woman, then yep, no, no loophole. Yes, pregnant woman. If it said female, I'd be like, any female is up for grabs here. <laughs> so anyways, moving on past this. <laughs> so Iwate is like, hubby, I gotta go do this, take care of our baby, but I don't trust you enough to take care of her in regards to spirits, so I'm going to leave this charm behind so that she will be protected from evil. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can hear her. <laughs> she just wants to be involved. I found the evil. You found the charm? I said I found the evil. <laughs> it's coming from... It's coming from... Shuri? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally all day, every single day. <laughs> I love it. It's all right. So, Echo's a demon, so it's fine. So all she gives this day. charm to her baby, basically, you know, um, and is like, you can fend off like a thief or some shit, but you ain't going to save her from a demon. Sorry, not sorry. Totally get it. So she says goodbye to them, and Iwate sets out for 
Adachi Gahara, which is located in Oshu? Question mark? I don't know if I'm oh. saying the place right. I don't. O L S H U. Yeah. Is it Oshu? Okay. Um, <laughs> and on her way there, when she arrives in Adachi Gahara, she finds this old cave that's like right off of the path. And is like, this is the perfect spot to set up shop to find a pregnant woman so that I can take their baby's liver. <laughs> so she kind of like. Gonna hang out and wait. Yeah, I assume that she kind of like turns it into like a hotel type thing. So she's like, offering... this lady is just like, cool. I'm going to go do that. Oh, look, a murder cave. Perfect. Perfect. So, so like, I'm like, she's offering... perfectly okay with this. No questions. She's cool. No, no, yeah. like, you know, like no moral like weighing of do I say like, this girl who just can't speak, which honestly isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, that, is the only, that is the only like, thing wrong with the princess is that she cannot talk. Yeah, it's not a big of a deal. And she just goes, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the murder cave. That sounds way better. Yeah. Wow. So she looks at this like lodging area to offer passerbys a place to stay in this cave that she doesn't even fucking own. <laughs> I want to stay in a cave with a random stranger. <laughs> so she sets up this shop thing. I imagine it's like, you know, like a little lemonade stand. Um, <laughs> okay. Do you remember the item shops? <laughs> a little in... lemonade stand, come stay in my murder cave. Yeah. But only you... if you're a pregnant woman. Do you remember the item shops in Ocarina of Time? See, I was yeah. I immediately think of Final Fantasy, but I know that not everyone has played Final Fantasy. So See, I think of not like a visual, but the story. Of, you guys have seen Arsenic and Old Lace, right? The old black and white movie, the play. No. No. Are you serious? I think I have. It's based on a true story about two old women who set up a their home for <laughs> passerbys and they murder them as they come in. Because I think yeah. they're putting them out of their misery. I and have, I have seen this. Yes, yeah, it's an old black and white movie. It's actually a stage play, but it's based on two real people that did this. And this is what I'm imagining. <laughs> I watched it in a film class in college. Interesting. I thank, watched it on TV. Thank you, Truman State, and your liberal arts education. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I really love old movies. So, like, that's a good one. It's, it's a comedy, by the way. It doesn't sound like it, but it's a comedy interesting so iwate sets up this murder stand is what we're going to refer to this as because it's a lemonade stand but for murder and has some arsenic. waits for a pregnant woman to come by but days turn into months and months turn into years and she's not having any luck and decades pass with her just holed up in this cave <laughs> for a pregnant woman hey Give look up, i know i know i left my daughter but look, this princess gonna talk. Right. Also, <laughs> why is the entirety of Japan unable to be pregnant? No, they're just not walking by the murder case. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I think because that's the thing, like, it's been decades. You really shot it up. You missed out on decades with this girl. Does she she could be dead. Like you know, she, she could be talking now. She she really shot herself in the foot setting up in this cave, honestly. Yeah. Like she should have just could have she could have like gone to like a, a street corner. All right, just to play devil's advocate, I feel like we're all being very judgy right now. We should take a step back. We should hear the rest of the story. And, I was just and like, then to put out there. and then we and then we can determine whether or not it is, a, it is appropriate to judge <laughs> Iwate. I would just like to put it out there. She totally should have just gone to the king and been like, "Dude, I need a pregnant lady," and he would have been like, "Cool, let's go arrest one." It was, I'm assuming, feudal times or earlier. It's perfectly allowed. I just want to say that Iwate's story has a fantastic ending. See, look, we should we should not judge her yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, I'm not going to give my guess. Decades have passed, and miraculously, a couple shows up, and the woman is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and they ask for lodging at her murder stand. And oh you would say like the princess. Oh, definitely. You can I see, I was gonna I was gonna say maybe she wound up pregnant was like, I'll cut that. <laughs> 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 so 
So Yuta is like, dope, you can stay here. I'll help you. Like, I'm a nurse. I know what the fuck I'm doing when it comes to childcare. Sure. Like, very Mary and Joseph here is what I kind of imagine. Staying in the manger or whatever. So, Minus my walk, <laughs> which has not been on her side this entire time. There's a fair amount of her in the Jesus story. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> So the woman it's goes into labor. Story? Yeah. So the mo- woman goes into labor right then and there. Than a baby's coming out. We need we need stuff. So her husband or whatever is like, oh shit, I don't know what to do. And Iwate's like, go and get these supplies. And he's like, okay. And leaves. <laughs> 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 so now Iwate is in the perfect position to help. Where's your kitchen knife? <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> I got this. So Iwate takes the woman, ties her up, strings her up into the air in this cave. So she's like hanging upside down. So she's like full access to her belly. Mm-hmm. So she's really using gravity to her advantage. Yeah. So then she takes her knife, her knife, cuts open the woman's stomach, pulls out the fetus. Now it's horns. Oh, oh, she fucked it up. Cuts open the fetus and takes out the liver. And she's like, cool, I have this. I can return now. So Iwate goes to cut the woman down and pack up and leave. And then she notices something about this woman. This woman has a charm with her. But not just any charm. It's the charm that she gave her daughter when she left. So Iwate had killed her own daughter and plucked her own granddaughter's or son, her own grandchild's liver out without a second thought to feed it to this princess so that she could talk. There's a lesson here. Dun dun. There's a lesson. I don't quite know what it is, but there's a lesson. The, this whole story was very Hercules for me and I was like, hot damn. So because of this knowledge, she is driven mad and Iwate attacked any traveler who would come by after this moment, cutting out their liver, eating it, and then drinking their blood. She which- didn't even take the liver back? Which turned her into an Onibaba. No, she was driven mad by the knowledge that she killed her own daughter and her own grandchild. But then it was pointless. The whole thing was, this is like the freaking Hunger Games. Which is pointless in the end. So, that's story one. Story two. I don't like it. No. Story two is kind of like a continuation of the story, if you will. What's up, Vi? Uh, Can I not be one of those, actually? (laughs) (laughs) All right, we have regrets. Maybe <laughs> wait until much, after much story regrets. two. <laughs> much regrets. Wait, wait until story two, and then we'll see if you still want to be an Onibaba or not. <laughs> All right. So the next story is the story of Kurozuka. So there is a monk who lived in the Ki Province. K I I Ki Ki. It's the Ki Province. So his name was Tokobu UK, and I'm going to say UK because it's how it looks to me. And so he okay. was traveling through Adachigahara, and the sun started to set. And he was like, oh shit, I need to find a place to stay. So he finds this cave. The same and cave? In the cave is this old woman there who offered him a lodging. Don't do it. Uh, don't, don't do it. She's going to get in the story. She's going to steal your liver. So UK takes just gonna murder you. This, this old lady, you know, she's just your normal grandma who happens to set up shop in a cave to offer people lodging. Mm-hmm. No well, red flag here at all. So, Why are the walls so, so As you do. He settles in for the night and the woman tells UK that he's welcome to stay, but she needs to go and get more wood if he's going to stay because they don't have enough to make it through the night. <sighs> However... She tells him, do not look any further in this cave, and then dips out. Pile of bones. So, UK, like literally anyone else when told not to do something, does it. So, he looks through this partition that blocked off the rest of the cave, and inside found a literal mound of bones and human remains. And he's horrified and remembers, oh yeah, I heard a rumor that there was an Onibaba that lived in a cave that ate people. And I still stopped at this cave. <laughs> you know, totally forgot about it until this moment. As you do. 
So, fearing for his life, he got the fuck out of there. Good job, UK. So, a short while later, the woman returned, only to find UK was nowhere in sight. And she was like, hmm, seems sus. He must have seen my corpses. So she turns into her true form of a fearsome Oni Baba. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's like, where's the magic? (laughs) Seems sus. He must have seen my corpses. Oh, oh no, my pile of bodies. I shouldn't have left them out. Oh, these bones? They're just I... for decoration. I no, don't be a I found them. Oh, those? I found found them. Them. I'm just holding those for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> but not like a friend friend, more like an acquaintance. Yeah, they're not like really I friends. Don't... I don't spend time with friend. people yeah. that kill He's other friend. people. Like a like a work friend. Yeah. <laughs> These are people bones. Whatever made you think they were people bones, kick skull under rock. <laughs> you're not a person. You're not a person until you don't poop yourself anymore. So so, so these aren't people bones. <laughs> we killed thank you. I'm sorry, just talking about you're not a person until you stop until you don't poop yourself is <laughs> just like, we're almost done, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so she realizes that he found the bones, turns from this little old innocent lady to her true fearsome Oni Baba self, creepiness and all, and gives chase and quickly catches up to UK and finds him. So UK, realizing that she's hot on his tail, takes out this statue that he had in his pocket and begins to chant a sutra. <clears throat> And the statue leaves his hands, dances up into the sky, and transforms into a demon slayer dressed in pure white and wielding this badass bow. So just imagine this like 12 foot tall white, I don't know, monk thing. So this slayer fires a single arrow at the Onibaba and kills her instantly. So although the Onibaba, uh, what did I write here? Although an Onibaba, not the Onibaba, an Onibaba, the spirit of the woman was finally allowed peace because she was trapped. She, you know, she'd become a demon. And so UK decides to take pity on her and buries the body where she fell, which is at the Akubama River. And this spot is known as the Black Mound, or in Japanese, the Kurozuka. 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 And, um,. That's the story of the only Interesting. Bye. Yeah. Still want to be a crazy old lady who eats livers? No. <laughs> there was hesitation. Especially, you about it. Well, I did. I did think about it, but I was like, no, especially if she was uh, murdered by a dancing statue that shot one arrow at her. But <laughs> her spirit was released and she did find enlightenment in Buddha. Can we cook the livers? I don't know. There was no fire. Well, she did mention firewood, so I would assume so. I would assume that you could cook the livers. It it might it might damage some of the nutritional properties, though. Get some barbecue going, you know. Well, we could throw a little bit, toss a little bit of soy glaze on there. (laughs) I don't know anything about Japanese barbecue, but if it's anything like Korean barbecue, I think I like it. Just throw some MSG on it. It'll be fine. MSG makes everything better. You can buy it. Buy the bucket. MSG makes my fingers swell. (laughs) That's because it's salt on crack. I was going going to be like, that might have something to do with the salt levels. (laughs) Um, Neither of those are what I like. They don't fit into my like American version of what I'd consider a witch. That's really cool though. They are definitely not your average witch, but they are pretty much what every witch has been based on moving forward. So, mainly Baba Yaga, but I can see the uh, argument for some features of the Onibaba and Kijo. I think, yeah, I think the idea that they, like, take that so that both of these cultures have a a witch-esque entity that take the form of like a an innocent old woman, mm-hmm. I think is is super interesting. That eats people. 
Like yeah. that's people. That's, that's the, the specific part. Cannibalistic <laughs> old women. <laughs> Didn't the witches, Ronald Ronald Dole? Am I getting that name? Roll Dole, that's the name. Roll. The witches? Roll Dole. Didn't they eat people? I have no idea. Sure they were cannibals. I don't remember. I know. Um, didn't they just remake that on like it's like on HBO Max or something? Yeah. Oh, is it out? Anne Hathaway. Is it Anne Hathaway? <sighs> yeah. It's so, out. Uh, I at least I saw the advertisement for it the other day. Also, um, the some movie theaters are doing Hocus Pocus right now, which again, a fun story. Triad three three mm-hmm. sister witches. The Hocus Pocus uh, reshowing actually outdid all other modern movies currently in theaters. Yep. And with COVID, you know, limiting everything, that's kind of impressive. Yep. My boyfriend and I went to see it a um, couple weekends ago. Was it last weekend? <laughs> At the, cinema, <laughs> at the cinema cafes out here and when you reserve your seats they they have like an automated system that creates a two-seat buffer so when you buy your tickets they create a two-seat buffer around wherever you picked your seats so you sit in an island and there's no cool. one around you and they like fully sanitize everything between every showing it's the cleanest i've ever seen a movie theater for 99 dollars, you can rent all of a theater at amc mm-hmm. nice. Why, what you? yeah and tickets to see focus focus were only like like four three or four bucks that's not bad at all yeah vi what's your question um so uh titania is doing next week's episode right Yes. Does it involve eating people? Because we've had three episodes in a row that involve eating people, and I'm starting to think that uh, people are going to start making assumptions about <laughs> us. I'm because say we had that the, I we had the Wendigo. So. I was just saying. Then we had Erzbet, yeah. and and then now we have Babiaga. Babiaga. And and I just we should probably steer away from the consumption of other people. Probably. And there's not a non-zero chance. Same there's a non-zero like a chance that my way. that my episode will involve eating people. Welcome <laughs> <laughs> oh. to Fucked Up Fables, the show where we like to discuss cannibalism. Fair, <laughs> fair. Should have at least one out of In the between? next month. I mean, that to be, to be fair, a, a lot of like folklore and stuff does revolve, like, does pretty heavily feature cannibalism. Like, yeah, strangely enough, yeah, it does. Yeah, I think it was because, like, maybe it was like a, one of those secret desire things, or like, this mm-hmm. is super taboo if we can't do it, but if we put it in a folklore <laughs> story, then it's fine. That's, right. Yeah, and all of the all of the bad people, all the bad people do the cannibalism, so we gotta right. like. We gotta have these fairy tales about how bad cannibalism. There's a vampire story I discussed last week where the good people ate people. What? Remember, you cut out the heart of the vampire, yep. burn it on the fire till it's ash, oh, and then yeah. mix it into the food oh. of the ill of the person who's sick and feed it to him. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. And to be fair, the cannibalism in Erzbet's story was to cure her epilepsy. So also a lot of it was alleged cannibal. <laughs> alleged I mean, a lot of medicine back then. I mean she definitely she definitely <laughs> ate a lady's boob. I'm, I'm throwing <laughs> yeah, that, out. that out there right now. Watch the episode if you want the full story because it was just- <laughs> <laughs> So is that all you had? She ate a lady's uh, yeah. boob to hear her episode. <laughs> so that was all I had. So with this, we're gonna bid adieu to spooky months. And welcome in our new themed month. Fast you want to tell us what it is, Titania? I don't have a good name. I know I'm supposed to think of a name, but all I get is like, we're theming November as, I guess, ruining popular childhood stories, but that's kind of like our entire thing. <laughs> so I don't have a title for it, but we're each picking a specific fairy tale from our childhood that we liked and then finding the fucked up origins of it so well, it's not really a fairy tale but a story oh, my, from- my, mine's a fairy tale <laughs> fairy tale story uh, from our childhood we could, mm-hmm. we could just theme the month as fucking up our fables <gasps> fuck up our childhood yeah Wait. So oh, we already do our childhoods <laughs> 
Hmm. Yeah, because mine, the one I picked, was a favorite of mine. It came in like a little bundle of 12 books that were like, you know, paperback children books. And I used to really, really love this story. And it wasn't until much later in life I found out that that's not the story. <laughs> all right. So thank you for tuning in. That's all that you had. And make sure to tune in next week, I guess, for my fucked up fable, which I'm sure most of you will be familiar with. Um, if you want to check us out on Facebook, join our group. That is what E. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Fucked up fables without the U, so F C K E D up fables. And then check us out if you're listening to this on Spotify or another podcast. Make sure to check us out on YouTube so you can see our lovely faces. Yay, which is uh, Fucked up fables with an asterisk. We had to be original with all of these names. I did not. <laughs> yeah, that's saying. why I can't remember them. So <laughs> thank you for having the list. <laughs> so um, it's um, F asterisk C K E D up fables. And if you have any suggestions for what you want to hear us talk about, make sure you send it to our Gmail. Yeah, which is fdup.fables at gmail.com, E-F-F-E-D up dot fables. And that's fucking teamwork, guys. <laughs> and Bye. if you want uh, pictures from this oh, session. Oh <laughs> what? You can find us on Instagram, and it's... Oh, we have F- an Instagram. F under fables. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll put some this. pictures. Yeah. So that was all. Bye, everybody. Bye.